Well, I mentioned earlier that nerve cells represent a special case because although they also use secondary active transport, like all cells do, they can also use the energy in the sodium electrochemical gradient to power action potentials. And that's what I want to talk about now. So let's imagine a nerve cell, and the way that we would draw a nerve cell would have the nerve cell body. Perhaps if this is a motor nerve, the cell body is in the spinal cord. And then we would have a very long process called an axon, which extends out of the cell body, and in our case of a motor nerve fibre, that's going to end at a neuromuscular junction with a muscle fibre. Now what the nerve cell needs to do is to send an electrical message to the muscle cell to tell it to contract. And that message takes the form of an action potential, which is a transient depolarization of the membrane of the axon, which propagates along the axon. Now what do I mean by that? Well, the cell has a certain membrane potential, and in a nerve cell, the resting membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolts. So inside the cell is negative relative to the outside. Now, during an action potential, if you imagine a particular segment of the axon, a particular position of the axon, the interior of the cell briefly becomes positive. So instead of minus 70, the interior shoots up to, let's say, plus 40 millivolts. And then it moves back down again. It goes back down towards minus 70. So a transient depolarization, as it's called, of the cell membrane. And that will propagate along the axon very fast. In our fastest axons, the action potential propagates at somewhere between 100 or 120 meters per second. So it's a very rapid electrical signal which allows our central nervous system, in this case, to communicate with the muscles of our body very rapidly indeed. The question then is, how do we get our cell, which is negative on the inside to begin with, to become positive on the inside? How do we achieve this depolarization? And the answer is that we can tap into the electrochemical gradient, the sodium, once again. Now, as I said earlier, there's a large driving force for sodium to get into a cell. It really wants to come into our cell, and that's because there's a concentration-based force and an electrical force acting in the same direction. That's our electrochemical gradient. But under normal circumstances, we don't allow very much sodium to come in. Some of it trickles in through secondary active transporters, but it doesn't move in at any very fast rate. The membrane potential is able to remain at minus 70 millivolts, let's say, because for every sodium that moves in through the transporters, another one is kicked out again by a sodium-potassium pump. We're at a resting state. But within the membrane of a nerve cell, and in fact within the membrane of muscle cells as well, we have a special type of protein called a voltage-gated sodium channel. And it's the presence of those voltage-gated sodium channels that make nerve and muscle excitable. We call them excitable cells. A voltage-gated sodium channel will open in response to a depolarization. So in other words, if you can find a way to make your membrane potential slightly more positive inside than it was, so if you start at minus 70, but then make the interior slightly more positive, maybe minus 60, minus 50, the voltage-gated sodium channels will begin to open. Now, if you imagine a voltage-gated channel opening, what that means is that the membrane is now more permeable to sodium ions. And because of the large driving force, the sodium ions really want to come in, and they begin to enter the cell at a faster rate. Now, a lot of the undergraduate textbooks and sometimes A-level courses use the term flooding in. They say that sodium floods into the axon. But that's a little bit inappropriate, I suppose, as a description, because the number of sodium ions that come in is actually still very small compared to the number of ions present in solution. So it's not as if the axon is deluged with sodium ions at a very, very high rate. But it's certainly true that they enter the axon more rapidly than they did before. And they enter the axon more rapidly than the sodium pump can cope. So in other words, you've got excess positive ions entering the cell. The interior of the cell will then become a little bit more positive. Now this gives us a process called positive feedback. 
Because what we're saying is, if we make the interior of the cell slightly more positive, that causes voltage-gated channels to open, that allows more sodium to come into the cell, that will make the interior even more positive, and that will cause more voltage-gated sodium channels to open, so more sodium comes in, so it becomes more positive, so more channels open. It's positive feedback, it's like a vicious cycle, and as a result, the membrane will rapidly become more positive in the interior. It will rapidly depolarize. And this is the upwards phase of the action potential, the rising phase of the action potential, as the interior of the cell becomes more and more positive. Now, it doesn't continue doing this forever for various different reasons, but one of the reasons which is quite important, or very important, is that the voltage-gated sodium channels will spontaneously inactivate after a short period of time, after a couple of milliseconds. The way that channels work is very interesting, and there's a lot of current research into this at the moment. I won't go into how it works, but the mechanics are all to do with the amino acid structure of this protein channel. Part of the channel causes it to open if the membrane depolarizes. And then there's another part of the channel, a loop of amino acids, which will block off the channel and inactivate it after a certain period of time. So it's only open for a little bit, and then it inactivates. So in other words, the membrane becomes rapidly very permeable to sodium, and then because of the inactivation process, it becomes impermeable to sodium and no more comes in. So the membrane depolarizes but then it stops depolarizing after a while. Now, at that point, the membrane begins to repolarize. In other words, the membrane becomes more negative again. And the reason it does that is that another group of voltage-gated channels has begun to open, and those are the voltage-gated potassium channels. Now, the electrochemical gradient for potassium was out of the cell. Potassium wanted to leave the cell, leave the interior of the cell. And if you begin to open voltage-gated potassium channels, more potassium can leave than did before, and that means that the interior of the cell becomes more negative, and eventually it goes back to rest. So the course of the depolarization during an action potential is that a small initial depolarization causes the voltage-gated sodium channels to open, that allows sodium into the cell, which means more channels open, positive feedback, the membrane depolarizes, but at the same time, the potassium channels were opening too. They just open a little bit more slowly. But at the point where the sodium channels are inactivating, we have a lot of potassium channels which are open. That means that instead of sodium coming in, potassium is now leaving. Positive ions are leaving the cell. The membrane potential goes back to its negative value and returns to rest. Now you can see all of this if you look at the recording of an action potential recorded intracellularly, and that means using an electrode which is inside the cell and comparing the potential difference across the membrane between the interior and the exterior. And you can see the rising phase as the sodium is coming in. You can see that it reaches some kind of peak value, and then it drops off again in the falling phase when potassium is leaving, and it takes it back to its resting membrane potential value. Now you'll notice that in a nerve action potential, in fact, when the membrane potential repolarizes, it initially goes to a value which is more negative than the resting membrane potential. And that little drop is called after hyperpolarization. That's actually due to a few of the voltage-gated potassium channels remaining open for a little bit longer, so the membrane is a little bit extra permeable to potassium. It makes the membrane potential just a little bit more hyperpolarized for a while, but eventually those potassium channels close and we go back to the resting membrane potential of minus 70. And that's our classic nerve action potential diagram. Now, a mistake is made sometimes in textbooks and in explanations given at school if people try to tell you that the sodium pump, the sodium potassium ATPase, is involved in this action potential. It isn't. It isn't involved in repolarization. It isn't involved in the after hyperpolarization. In fact, the pump isn't involved at all. The entire action potential is due to voltage gated channels opening or closing at slightly different time periods. And because of the ion movements that follow, the membrane will depolarize and then repolarize and ultimately go back to rest. Now, that's not to say that the sodium potassium pump 
is not important. It is important because ultimately, if some sodium is coming in during an action potential, if some potassium is leaving, you've got to restore the balance. And so in the long term, the pump is going to be important in correcting the concentration changes that occur. But as I mentioned earlier, when I said that it was inappropriate to say that sodium floods into an axon, the amount of sodium moving in during an action potential is quite small. And so you don't really need the pump until you've had a lot of action potentials occurring. And in fact, experimentally, you can poison your pump and you can still have hundreds or even thousands of action potentials occurring before the nerve cell eventually fails and action potentials cease to be produced. But because you want your nerve cell to last, well, all your life in most cases, it's important to have the pump running in the background and making sure that the sodium levels inside the cell don't rise and the potassium levels don't fall. So it maintains the balance in the long term. But the action potential itself is all about the voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels.